Do you have a 12 volt LED strip and need an easy way to control it via your computer, phone or even via voice commands? In this video I'll show you how to build a simple solution for this, the MySensor single LED module. Hello makers and welcome to the second episode of Tita Devlog. In the last video I've shown you the PCB designs for my smart home project. Now it's time to build one of these devices and as you have seen I decided to start with the one channel LED controller. A quick overview of the specs and features. Single LED can switch or dim any light with an operating voltage between 5 and 15 volts and a maximum current of 2.5 amps. It also features a button for manual control, a bicolor LED to signalize RF communication and an optional expansion port for attaching external light switches that I'm not using at the moment however. Here are the components you'll need for this project. The custom PCB measuring 25 by 50 millimeters. The Gerber files are available on GitHub. An AppMega 328P microcontroller. An RFM69HW 868 MHz RF module. An 8 pin 1.25 millimeter male JST connector. Surface mount resistors. Three 100 nanofarad SMT ceramic capacitors. A 22 microfarad SMT tantalum capacitor an AMS 1117 3.3 volts voltage regulator, an IRO LML 2502 MOSFET, a 12 mm tactile button, a 5 mm red and green bicolor LED, a 2 pin screw terminal and a DC barrel jack. Start by soldering the male 8 pin JST connector to the side of the board. Be careful not to melt the plastic with your iron. Also, don't apply solder to the top part of the contact plates, since that will lead to bridges. Then continue with the AdMega 328P microcontroller. This 32-legged beauty has to be positioned accurately on the PCB, with the marking on the chip matching the dot on the PCB. Solder one pin on the edge to prevent it from moving around. Then apply some flux to the pins, put a little bit of solder on the tip of your iron and touch every single pin. This will make the solder flow between the pad and the pin. Here you'll see the first 8 soldered pins and that is how your board should look like when you're finished. Continue by soldering the two 100 nanofarad capacitors C1 and C3, the resistors R1, R4 and R5 and the dual LED D1. Now it's time to program and test the microcontroller. For that you'll need the ISP and serial adapter cables to plug into the 8-pin connector. Instructions on how to solder these can be found on my website, link is in the description. You'll also need to add the barebone AdMega 328P to the board definitions of your Arduino IDE. Plug the ICSP adapter into your board and connect a 3.3V FTDI adapter to it. Then connect the FTDI adapter to your computer via USB. Select AdMega 328P 8MHz internal clock from the board menu and make sure the correct serial port is selected. Then select Tools, Burn Bootloader and wait for the process to complete. Then unplug the USB cable and the ICSP adapter and connect the serial adapter to your board. Plug the adapter's header into your FTDI board and reconnect the USB cable. To test your microcontroller, open the blink sketch, change the LED pin to 7 and load it to your board. Now the LED should blink green. If it does, congratulations, your board works and you can continue to solder the remaining components. Begin with the small parts on the top side. The voltage regulator U3, the MOSFET Q1, the 100 nanofarad capacitor C2, the 22 microfarad tantalum capacitor C4, Make sure that the black strip on the capacitor lines up with the plus mark. Flip the PCB and continue with R2, R3 and the RF69HW module. Then connect the small pin next to the power terminal to the pin next to the output using solid core wire. To complete the assembly, solder a 2 pin screw terminal for the LED output, a DC barrel jack for the power input and the tactile switch S1. Then you need to make your RF antenna. To do this, cut a piece of solid core wire to the quarter of your RF module's wavelength. In case of an 868 MHz module, it is 8.64 cm. Solder your antenna to the pin labeled AND, wrap it around a pencil to make it more compact and you're done!
Now you'll need to upload the software. Open the single LED Arduino sketch, change the network ID if needed and flash it to your board using the serial adapter. To make the module look more appealing, you can put it in a 3D printed case. The STL files for this are available on GitHub. Put the top piece upside down on your table, then insert the PCB, make sure button, LED terminals and the mounting holes line up with the case. Finally, close the case using the bottom part and two self-tapping screws. Now you can install your module wherever you have some 12 volt LEDs to control. For example, at a 1 meter LED strip over your bed, like I'm doing. To install the module, just connect the LEDs to the screw terminals, make sure the polarity is correct and plug in a 12 volt power supply. The LED on the module should flash a couple of times as the module connects to your gateway. Once the LED has stopped flashing, you can control your light by pressing the button. A short press will switch the light on or off. By keeping the button pressed, you can dim it. Since this is of course a smart light switch, you can control it via your mobile phone too. And even via voice commands. Alexa, turn the light on. Alexa, set the light to 30%. Alexa, turn the light off. All of these smart features, however, do require some work to set them up. You'll need a Raspberry Pi as a gateway, smart home server software, I use the Modix, and a bit of tweaking. I might cover that in further videos, so get subscribed if you don't want to miss anything and I'll see you in my next video. Happy making!